1919. When the day comes, they eventually let us out of here. I think I might become a cobbler. There's something I could say to that, but I won't. Quiet, Gordy! You, Brocklesby, a cobbler. What do you know about footwear? Fact is, you'll have trouble finding any kind of work, you lot. Wait till you read the papers and look at the small lads. Here, vacancy for teaching post. Maidstone School for Boys. Conscientious objectors need not apply. Or how about this? Tailor's assistant required. Well, we could do that, Bert. We've had nearly three years experience. COs need not apply. Well, once we do get out, we'll be voting to change all that. Do away with such petty prejudice. Quiet! You lot won't be voting for no one, and you heard? Conches have been barred from voting for five years. If it was up to me, you'd be barred for life. And then the door to the workshop opens. Another warder appears. All he says is, Ruckle speak, Gordy Murphy wanted. Is this it, Norman? Come on, look smart. Are we being released? We're taken out and told to collect our few things, books and photos. I said to him, what about the shoe? Which shoe? This shoe I'm repairing. I haven't finished it yet. Oh, forget the shoe. Just move, will you? And then we marched back along the corridor. It is. It's happening. We're being released. Keep moving. Men are standing by their cell doors, watching us. They start drumming their feet, softly at first. Get a move on, Brocklesby! But they're never more insistently. The sound swelling higher and higher, rolling along the corridors of this house of pain. It's against all the rules. Brocklesby! The warders can't stop them. The sound of it rips my heart and almost makes me weep. After three prison sentences, dear Clifford is now a frail and emaciated 30-year-old who looks twice his age and is suffering from the onset of tuberculosis. Friends, <clears throat> three years ago, we stood in this hall and made a pledge to resist conscription. Not one of us would dare to compare the suffering we subsequently underwent with that of the men who were actually engaged in warfare. <clears throat> but we are proud to have broken the power of the military authority. We have witnessed at first hand its brutalities. We have seen the cruel degrading of human personality upon which its discipline depends, but we have defeated that authority. And should this evil thing conscription continue, we will defeat it again. Prison warder was right though. Finding work doesn't prove easy, especially in my hometown. But then I get this idea, which I want to share with Annie. Vienna? That's right. You're going to go to Vienna? The Quakers are setting up an organization there, you see, to help feed the children in the city. 
they're suffering terribly. There are so many orphans. And so, yes, I'm thinking of joining them, Annie. But when I return, maybe in a year or so, well then, we could get married. Those are the people that killed my brother. Annie, it wasn't the children of Vienna who killed your brother. You've been away from the world too long. You've no idea what we've endured these last years. Don't take my hand, but I'm in no mood to... Please, Annie, don't be angry with me. Of course I'm angry! Why wouldn't I be angry? With such a... such a proposal as that! You ask too much! You'll have to come to a decision, Bert. Whether you want to spend your life with me here in England or go with the Quakers to work in Vienna, you won't be able to do both. Well, that's a staggerer. For a moment, I think about tossing a coin again. Help me decide. But I don't. I know where my future lies. More than 18 and a half thousand young British men refused to act against their consciences. 31 of those lost their sanity and at least 70 were known to have died in work camps or as a result of their treatment while in the hands of the military. 70? It's a tiny number compared to the 19,240 British soldiers who lost their lives on the first day of the Battle of the Somme, and whose courageous sacrifice is remembered every Armistice Day. But the question I want to ask is this. The young men who showed a different kind of courage, refusing to fight whatever punishments were thrown at them, passionately believing that this was the best, indeed the only way to truly serve the cause of peace. Aren't they equally worthy of being remembered? And there's the other question, of course. How would I have responded if I'd been a young man in 1914? Would I have had the courage to endure solitary confinement, crucifixion, the threat of execution, imprisonment in a 10 feet deep pit? I truly hope I would have had the courage But there's no way of knowing, is there? Oh. 